Really well done. You have now completed the Lean Thinking 1 chapter and are starting to develop a lean mindset. Let's take a look back at everything you have learned within the chapter, starting with the history of lean through to learning about change and paradigms. The story of lean begins with the invention of the car. The mechanics that worked there were very highly skilled and made cars on a one by one bespoke basis. Customers would be willing to wait a matter of months to have their car produced. The quality was unpredictable as each car was made separately and the cars were extremely expensive and only available to the rich. As craftsmen worked in silos, there was secrecy in the way they worked. That's when Fred Winslow Taylor sought to improve efficiency by first separating planning and production functions. He started mapping the sequence of steps and the processes needed to build a car. This scientific management style made huge improvements and he launched a new way of working, mass production. By reducing the complexity of steps and standardising dimensions, he eliminated the craftsmanship and revolutionised mass production. Each operator would complete highly repetitive but efficient operations. Wheel making was broken down into almost a hundred steps, done by different men at different machines. Workers felt very alienated, completing inhumane, mind-numbingly dull and repetitive work. People were judged based solely on their output. Operators worked with big machines with piles and piles of stock. Quality problems became a big, big problem. An attitude of us versus them, operators versus managers was formed. After World War II, Japan initially experienced extreme economic difficulty. The difference was that in Japan, farmers wanted vans and trucks. People in cities wanted small cars and wealthy executives wanted luxury vehicles. The mass production way of America wouldn't work in Japan. They needed a more flexible way of producing cars that would allow different models and colors of a car to be produced on the same production line. With a lack of stable demand and no access to capital, Toyota was facing bankruptcy and they needed to produce them only when they'd been ordered. They promised all workers a lifetime employment guarantee and a gradual increase in salary based on their time served at Toyota. Focus was turned on developing their people, involving team members in improvements. Instead of having unordered cars, taking up space and depreciating in the parking lot, cars were made at the exact same rate as demand. The mentality of rework was replaced with a pursuit of quality. Operators took pride in what they were doing, stopping the production line if they found a defect. Each defect was treated with care and operators would problem solve to find and solve the origin of the problem. Lean is not just applicable in large organisations, is equally applicable in small ones. With the next industrial revolution coined Industry 4.0, we are now seeing the further integration of lean and technology and a new wave of robotics and automation. Firstly, traditional managers take a I know best attitude where they make decisions by themselves in isolation without consulting and involving the people that are actually doing the process every day. Traditional managers take a narrow tunnel vision view in a silo mentality and make decisions only thinking about the immediate impact it will have on them and their team and not the wider company and the stakeholders that are all impacted. Managers would be very results and output focused and taking a command and control approach. This would lead to a strong blame culture where mistakes and problems would be brushed under the carpet and hidden. There was little regard for quality. A lean manager involves everyone impacted in the decision-making process. Improvements are celebrated and rewarded. The last thing they ever want is overproduction, the worst waste of all. If a problem is ever spotted, Toyota empower all staff to stop the production line and alert a supervisor immediately. Lean teaches us that typically 80% of an entire process is non-value adding. That is why we focus on removing waste and not making the value adding part faster. Gemba is a Japanese word that means the actual place. 
If you're unsure about how a process works or perhaps want to know more about a problem, go to the Gemba. The act of going to Gemba is extremely valuable and a direct management approach. Gemba is the place where the work takes place and the value is added. A good lean manager will go to Gemba and a poor manager will try and solve problems in their offices away from the action. A Gemba walk needs to be firstly planned, then conducted and also followed up after. Kaizen means to change for the better. Complacency is the enemy of a Kaizen culture. True Kaizen as being the act of everyone, everywhere and every day improving within the organisation. That Japanese companies have the exact same problems as every other country. We often convince ourselves that a change is only meaningful if it's big and recognisable by outsiders. However, that is not the case. The idea of small improvements accumulating to get significant results can be explained through the phenomena of compounding. But as time goes on, these small improvements compound and you find a very big gap between the companies that have improved 1% per day and the ones that haven't. Incremental improvements are made by these small 1% improvements. Breakthrough improvements are sprint-like efforts that have a focused objective in mind. These improvements expect a step change in performance, lean as the destination that you are aiming for. It's a state of perfect effectiveness and perfect efficiency that maximizes customer value, has zero waste and involves everyone in the company in improvement. It is a destination that always changes and never stands still. Continuous improvement is a great low cost and relatively low effort way to achieve your goals. Six Sigma is another approach and it prioritizes reducing process variation and focusing on the quality of a process. The Lean Six Sigma combines Lean and Six Sigma principles and uses a belt system to demonstrate expertise level. We're all resistant to change in some way, so let's first recognize that improvement requires change. To successfully make lean changes, we need to understand and effectively manage the change process. A paradigm is a model, a rule, or a habit that influences our way to interpret a given situation or a problem. In order to overcome change, you may need to understand their perspective as well.